Hello, hello, hello. The month is over and it can't be fast enough for me. I am tired of sitting there staring at these charts for hours and hours and hours and not getting any real price action. That should hopefully pick up in September, uh, most likely uh, just towards the end of next week when we have September uh, – uh, non-farm payroll report and I guess we'll also probably have the ECB and the BOE next week because uh, they always come together and um, we'll see we'll get a little bit of volatility and then we'll have all the information about uh, you know if we're gonna taper and so forth and we'll um, probably get things rolling what I would expect with the uh, actual introduction of uh, oh I guess would be reduction of uh, bond purchases program we would probably see dollar strength I know a lot of people are saying that that's already baked in the cards baked in the goods but I uh, I think once we get the uh, big boys and the big banks back into play that will be the uh, plan but then again, that's just my opinion. We'll have to see how it plays. That's what's uh, nice about uh, nice about doing uh, being a price action trader and using uh, breakout levels and so forth is that I let the markets tell me what uh, what's going on rather than trying to predict what's going on. Um, let's go through and just look at the majors for a big picture view, and uh, we'll go also go through the pairs. Obviously, there were no trades today. But if we look at the Euro USD, uh, obviously everybody knows because I've talked about this a million times. We're in a range within a range. In a bigger range, we have 127.50 as support, 134.50 as resistance, and you can see that we just moved down to test the bottom of the uh, lower range into the end of the week. 134.50 and 132 is the uh, is the bottom of that. I guess there's the 50 fib that I could probably throw in there. Let's see where that will land. I bet it's about 131 something. Uh, it's exactly at 131. That is pretty interesting. Um, just did that for uh, giggles, though. So let's see. So what we have here is that if the pair can close below this level heading into the new month, uh, which really kind of kicks off on Tuesday because everybody, it's Labor Day in the U.S. Uh, on Monday, we could see that if we start out the new month below this level and with this trend, we could find a, maybe find ourselves out of consolidation because quite often when you do get the beginning of a new month, you get the beginning of a new trend. I mean, you can see right here, uh, beginning of... Um, Beginning of June, the pair just started to go, go, uh, go up right into the beginning, and uh, we can see that most of these things will coincide with the beginning of a new month. Uh, February, we see we see the turn right there. That's February first turn in the pair. I guess it continued all the way through March, and then you can see uh, in April we had a turn right there. So quite often, the beginning of the month, the momentum that you get could follow through, and so we'll see right here. Basically, this month uh, in August, we didn't get anything. We're right back where we started, and it's basically been uh, just a round trip. So we'll have to see if we can get a close and then we get some momentum lower Then I would expect that we would go all the way down to the bottom of the pair bottom of this range at 127.50 and the implications that would have on the other pairs the euro JP and euro odd and euro New Zealand are pretty obvious where we can We'll be able to finally see some volatility in those pairs and a little bit of movement So we'll have to watch that and that that will be key heading into the new month the 132 level uh, and if you look on a uh, weekly chart you can see that uh, that's definitely a very uh, bullish candle and it could indicate that we definitely have more strength going on the downside. I mean, we have a similar candle there and that was the beginning of a trend lower, a similar candle there in the beginning of February. And you can see that all of those almost always indicated um, a beginning of a move lower. So we'll keep our eye on that. And if you look at the Great Britain USD, I, I just for some reason was just uh, well, was bored looking through the um, the monthly charts and the pairs. And it is intriguing how the, this pair wants to be at 152. I mean, if we look at uh, if we look over the last since the uh, I guess. February, you can see that the pair basically stopped right around 152, then it went down, finished at 152, shot up, right back down to 152, bam, bam, 152, 152, and now we're going up, and now let's see, maybe we'll probably go right back down to 152, and if we look on a weekly chart, it looks as though that we have the trend line break, 154.30 is the only thing that's keeping us from going back down to 152, so we'll have to watch that into the new week, uh, into the new month, because we're going to also be watching for a push down lower in the... Um, 
in the Great Britain USD and this 154.30 level will obviously be key and if we look on a daily chart I mean we've all seen this uh, as I've said as long as the pair remains above 154.30 it does favor a continued buy a continued push uh, a continued push higher but then we had the trend line break and we have had a little bit of follow through on that I mean it's down 80 pips from that trend line break it's not a, not a spectacular drop and so we'll have to see what happens and this 154.30 will confirm that at the beginning of a, a lower trend and we would look for a push down towards the 152 would be my first target just because the pair is so comfortable there and then we could see if we get down further 150 and so forth and um that would obviously have implications on the Great Britain crosses that we look at. Aussie, this thing is doing nothing. It's slowly drifting lower. 88.50 is key. If we break it, then uh, the downward trend is still in line. And, I mean, ultimately, if we look on a bigger picture, this, this pair... I haven't done this myself. I'm just looking. Uh, this pair could move all the way back down. I mean, to the uh, 80, 80, 50 level. And your budget first target obviously would be about this 85, 75 level. I'm going to throw that on there because if we do get a break, that would be the downward downside target for a move lower. Um, 85, 80, and that's what I would be looking at on any break on that level. And if we do get that, that would obviously pick up a little bit of momentum in the other pairs the other pairs um, in the Aussie and so forth, uh, the Aussie crosses. Let me just move this out of the way. Um, so that would be the target uh, down downward about 85.80 if we do break break uh, lower in this cross. But until then, we have the trend line right above, and it's just riding the trend line. So what you can basically do is any pushback up to the trend line, shorting opportunity, any break of this ascending trend line, uh, break of this level here would favor a push down towards the 85.80, 87.80 level at first, and keep our eyes on that. New Zealand, this baby has been driving me nuts this week. I've talked about it, sang about it, dreamt about it. So my friends won't let me talk about it anymore. Nobody wants to hear about it. But we have this trend line. It, it started the week, what, right, basically right here at 77.70, and we're at 77.40. And we finally look like we have confirmed the break of this line, um, but we were basically at the lows right there. So uh, there's nothing spectacular. We can just basically kick this trend line off right now. And we, hey, oh my gosh, there's another one right there. And, um, so we need a, a confirmed break. We're going to push down to this trend line. And I mean, the reason you had that other one, because I thought we'd get some momentum, a quick push. I thought we would break that trend line and bam, we'd shoot right down to that. And that would just tell me where we should uh, consider uh, taking our profits on any trades that we would have in the New Zealand, Euro New Zealand, Great Britain New Zealand. That never happened. Slowly breaking, slowly. And uh, we'll just have to watch it. Um, watch watch the price action in that pair and uh it did have nice moves last week but unfortunately those all happened in asia it was one of those it's one of those months i mean i guess finished up four and six pips but most of that I mean, basically we made that all in the first week and since then just treading along by far the uh, lowest total but august is always the slowest month i always tell myself i should just take this month off because it drives me nuts sitting here all day um watching the charts when nothing's really going on. Um, but that should pick up. So we're going to watch this. So heading into the new month, we, I mean, we have a, a recurring theme here. Heading into the new month, we have the Euro testing the bottom of a range. We have the Great Britain testing, uh, getting close to testing the 154.30 range. We have the Aussie sitting right here on the edge of breaking lower. We have the New Zealand sitting there right on the edge of breaking lower. And the Yen, no. It's, well, it's on the edge. It's on the top of its triangle again, on the edge of maybe getting a breakout higher. I don't even have to talk about this. We all know it's in a triangle. We need a break out of the triangle. We get a break of this 98. We can be up right in 100 in, in, a, uh, in a New York second. It'll plumb take it to us. So we'll watch that and um, for the break. And that's another theme. We have a pair on the edge. The Euro JPY, that's a pair sitting on the edge. Uh, and so, I mean, we, 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 the, the market is either going to rebound uh, starting into the new month and or we're going to break out of these ranges and everything we should we, we should get a little bit of action and it'll be nice uh the euro jpy same thing as the euro J us jpy i don't really have to go into detail about that you guys get the bigger picture uh the great britain jpy is interestingly though is not this this guy is just range blah, blah, blah. don't even want to look at it until we get either up to the top of this 154 154 60 area or we get down to this 147 50 area uh i mean it's a, it's a rather <laughs> large range but right now this is just a jumble so i'd stay away with this 
delete it off your screen. Don't look at it. Pretend you never heard of it. Uh, the Euro odd, we can see this pair is similar, is just kind of drifting around. We have support here at 150, resistance at 144. I guess we could probably throw a trend line up there, but I'm not going to. Um, let's see if we can actually. If we can get a big trend line coming all the way from the bottom, I can tell you right now we won't be able to. But you could throw one from there, but that's just making a, 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 a I'm not interested in that trend line. Um, if you, you can see here that uh, this cross, once again, until we get up to the 150 or the 144 level, um, is it's 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 just basically drifting sideways with the Aussie and because you know, the euro is not doing anything drifting sideways the euro this month was like the slowest was the lowest monthly range I think since 2006 which is kind of amazing um, if you see that the uh, just look for a break uh, look for a, you can either test the top of the range or the bottom range so it should really be uh, positive signals Great Britain odds still riding this trend line higher just going to be watching this for a breakout um, I mean I guess if the odds breaks down lower we're going to get a push higher again on this pair and we the first target would be the 170 176 area Great Britain New Zealand um, two is the top and then traded really nicely off that in this week, and then it's right back to it. I guess 272, that's a nice resistance zone right there. And just keep watching that. And Euro New Zealand is just in this range. Um, these exotics aren't as nicely set up as we had in the majors, but that's because they are feeding off the, uh, you know, the crosses of the two currencies. And they've just basically been drifting sideways, so they're not really getting into any particular uh, particular location. All right, so heading into the new month should be exciting. Looking for volatility to pick up. It'll definitely start probably on Thursday and uh, Thursday, well, definitely on Friday with the uh, with the non-farm payroll and we could get some action on Thursday and Wednesday. Remember, Monday's a holiday in the U.S. Uh, closing the month up and I will see you guys next week. Bye.